Welcome to Grow Week We Don't Know. <laughs> 11? Yeah. Well, it's not our 11th one though, Father, is it? It is number 11. It's number 11? Okay. Yes. Welcome to number 11. All right, so, Kidiakos Dramonis, President of St. Demetrius Community, Father Joseph Samad, Pastor of Greek Orthodox Church, St. Demetrius in Daytona Beach. Today we're here with our update of the parish council and the, and the uh, parish news. So, finally we see some light at the end of the tunnel. We see that the uh, metropolis has sent out some directives which are rather involved, rather lengthy. So I'm gonna rely on our president, uh, Kiriakos Dramonis, to give you sort of a uh, thumbnail look at what these are. And as they study them and um, are able to articulate them and absorb them, we'll come back with more information next week. But Kiriakos, give us a thumbnail sketch of what the metropolis is expecting from us as we open somewhere around the 31st of this month. Thank you, Tasso. Uh, hello to everybody again out there. I hope everyone is continuing to stay safe. Christos Anesti. Christos Anesti as well. I uh, hope everyone is staying safe. Um, as Tasso mentioned, uh, this past Thursday, we did have a, a huge directive uh, drop from the metropolis, and it does highlight a number of things. It's pretty extensive. Uh, fortunately, we had a meeting of our parish council scheduled on that Thursday as well. So about two hours after these directives dropped, uh, we were able to discuss these uh, and have a nice discussion and start talking about how it's going to affect uh, St. Demetrius and how we're going to apply those, uh, those directives to our church sp specifically. So fortunately, we've gotten a good early jump on it. What I can tell you is Sunday, May 31st, is the first Sunday that we can have people back in church for services. And so the parish council will be working diligently over the next couple weeks to make sure that everything is set up and ready to go for Sunday, May 31st. So we will have people in church starting Sunday, so May 31st. So the people in church is a number or is it a spacing? What, what, have they given any directive in that regard? Yes, they have. Uh, of course, we're going to have to follow the social distancing guidelines. We're going to have to be... Uh, we're going to be requiring the use of masks, and, and that's coming again from the metropolis. Um, so the full list of directives were included in this week's email of the Sunday Bulletin for the parishioners to peruse and look at. Okay. Um, so that will be available to you through your email. If you receive our, our Sunday Bulletin weekly, please go ahead and take a look at those as well, just to start familiarizing yourself about what might be different here in the church a couple weeks from now. Uh, but at least fortunately, we do finally have a, a date where we right. can open up the church and let some people come back in and do the in-person worshiping. The live streaming will continue for those people who feel uncomfortable still at this time of venturing out of their homes or uh, congregating, let's say, with people. Mm -hmm. So the live streaming will continue as well uh, for the benefit of the parishioners, uh, maybe the elderly who do still feel that they are, because they are a high-risk group and they're still being asked to maintain uh, increased social distancing at this time. That's why we're inclu <clears throat> excuse me, including the live, uh, the live streaming as well. But, uh, you know, like I said, all the directives are in, in line there on the, uh, on the parish bulletin. And uh, we will have more information next week for everybody. We've already started preparations here in the church to make sure everything is ready. And uh, we'll be ready to go. And for those of you who have not received the bulletin, if you'll contact the church office, say, I'm not receiving the church bulletin, please put my name on the email list. That will get it to you. So, um, Kiriako, we, um, from my business, we understand now because on Monday we get to open, and we understand that what the governor has guidelined us to. I went out and did a questionnaire, and, and this is probably going to hold true for our people as well. Maybe a little bit more towards the third category, just because of the elderly content we have of our, of our community here. But we found about uh, 15 to 20 percent of our people that we polled fall into the first of three groups. They said, hey, I'm ready to go, I'm confident, I wanna come back. About 60% fall into the group, well, I'm gonna hold back a couple weeks before I come in. Third group is, I gotta see this all play out. I wanna see if we indeed have a second wave. And we understand that, we respect that, and that's why the parish council has gone to the lengths they've had to make sure that there is live streaming. Father is available if they need him for anything. Right. And uh, we're, we're gonna work um, uh, diligently, for lack of a better term, towards that goal, correct? Absolutely, and you know, this holds true for my business as well. You, you are seeing that. What the governor uh, talked about two weeks ago was kind of a half phase one, and now he's moving to a full phase one in the state of Florida. So 
this is kind of our phase one in terms of what the metropolis uh, dropped on us this past Thursday. And I'm sure they're going to want to see how it is implemented, what comes of it, what kind of response we get from the parishioners. And then we'll be getting more directives and more adjustments and direction as, as things go on. And, and we'll this learn is a as, fluid thing. Yeah, we'll learn as we go along. We will. It, we will. Unfortunately, you know, it's not something that there's a textbook for that we can follow. It's a fluid motion, and, and we're trying to do the best we can with everything that's been given to us. Hey, did you notice my voice sounds better in here with the dome? Yeah. you yeah. got a, <laughs> you got a nice echo going. So, Father, as we begin to reopen the church physically to people, uh, it hasn't been close to them. They could have come by and prayed and lit candles and that. The main concern you have as a pastor is the ministries of the church. We've already seen that our youth, our main youth ministry program of the Metropolis was sort of been kiboshed this year with St. Stephen's Camp being put on hold and being canceled for the year. What are your concerns in regards to, to all the ministries of the church at this point, and what do you see as the next step for the ministries? Uh, first of all, Jesus Anesti, uh, thank you for joining see, he didn't us. Forget. Uh, this is a, a big concern for myself as well as for the parish council and for the uh, leadership of the parish. It, it, we have been consumed all this time by all those directives and instructions coming and we're, we're just trying to learn our way uh, how to, to deal with it. So it took a lot out of our time and our energy and even though it didn't matter how many frequent meetings we had, you know, it was still a lot to digest. I think uh, because of most of our energy was directed toward just dealing with the, uh, with the situation. We didn't have enough energy to focus on our ministries. So many of our ministries um, were kind of uh, uh, in hibernation or a little bit of move. Uh, now, it is important because uh, I don't know how long this uh, situation is going to last uh, or it's effects or consequences, it's very important that we kind of dedicate some energy to go back and see how we are going to engage everybody, the, uh, whether the youth or other sects. Uh, VIP, the you know, Yes, because now even to involve them or to, get, to engage them, it's a different set of realities or, you know, a different set of conditions that we have kind of uh, uh, to create or to adjust to make the uh, ministries work. Like right, we, uh, according to the directive, we still don't have in-person meetings. So we're gonna have to figure out ways where, you know, be it online, be it through Zoom, you know, how we are going to, ga to gauge from remotely. Mm -hmm. So uh, at the end of the day, uh, yes, the, uh, the ministries is a, is a big uh, concern because uh, this is the life of how the church is expressed. It's expressed through the, the prayers, the liturgies, and then it, it, is, it is expressed through the teaching and the philanthropy and the socialing, uh, social, socializing. And, uh, well, the Orthodox faith is a contact faith, right? It's contact sport, it's a, right? Pretty much, yes. Yeah. So, so let me just jump away for a moment. One of the ministries that is um, probably under the auspices of the parish council, the Philoptos, is the coffee hour. Yep. Tell us, give us an update of the virtual coffee hour for tomorrow. Yeah, so tomorrow we're doing our first virtual coffee hour. It's being conducted through the Zoom meeting. Again, in your parish council bulletin that was emailed to you, the meeting ID has been included. Uh, if you have a computer, you can go to zoom.us uh, and you can uh, install the meeting player, so to speak, on your computer and that way you can join meetings uh, that way. If you have an Android or iPhone device, you can go to the App Store and download Zoom. Uh, once that's installed, you click Join Meeting, enter the meeting ID, and you can join the meeting. The virtual coffee hour will start tomorrow uh, after uh, the Divine Liturgy, which is being live streamed. So probably give it about 5-10 minutes afterwards and uh, join in there, and it'll be ready to go. Now, a word on that. One of the directives is that no coffee hours will take place as of right now. So opening up even on Sunday, March 31st, there will not be a physical coffee hour. So this virtual coffee hour will be the norm for the time being going forward. So that's why we wanted to get that going and get it, un and get it underway. Hopefully if there's any bugs, we can work those out tomorrow and make sure that going forward, 
we have a virtual coffee hour so that people can still converse. Because right now, the way the directive stands, we are coming to church to worship. We are keeping our distance. Once church is over, we are exiting. No conversations. No socializing. Maintaining we don't have to distance. worry about noise in the narthex now. Yeah, that, that, that will be the one positive. So no one's going to complain about Maria's Paximania being soggy, right? Coffee <laughs> <laughs> oh, hour. Yeah. <laughs> for a couple I hope weeks. Not. I hope not. But, but, you know, these are some of the things that have changed within the church, and unfortunately, you know, that's what's going on. But we're going to have to deal with these. Uh, the, like we said, the way they come, we're, there's no textbook for this, and we're going to work through it. Paniotti, hello, do Paracolo. So, Father, is there any closing statements that you have for any, anything you'd like to say to you? Well, I would like to, uh, again, to express my, my thank yous for the parish ministry leadership, for their uh, diligent uh, work through those difficult time and uh, uncharted uh, uh, territories that uh, we have gone through, and for the time that they dedicated toward this, uh, uh, you know, keeping the life of the church going so people even from remotely or from home, they feel that the church is with them, uh, supporting them, uh, w- working with them during these uh, difficult times, giving them a sense of uh, comfort and security and support. And that was very important when we got the feedback from our parishioners. It was very important to know that they felt that the church was there, there side by side, doing everything according to their pulse, and they felt the comfort coming from the from the grace of God and from the community through St. Demetrius. And this is a great, huge you know, testimony for uh, uh, the performance of our parish uh, leadership. So I will, I will challenge all of you who are parishioners of St. Demetrius. Like the first apostles of the church had to go forth and spread the word of the church and ignite the church and build the church from three women that went to the, to the uh, tomb and saw that Christ had been resurrected. And now becomes our mission to reignite St. Demetrius. And as St. Demetrius was an intercessor, a protector, and a motivator for us, we should take on that role now. One of the great gifts we received was that the planes didn't fly and Paniotti's still here. So for those of you who have not heard Paniotti yet, we're gonna ask Paniotti as we close today to, to chant Christos Anesti for us as a gift to us and to motivate us that our mission is to reignite St. Demetrius and have it become a beacon of Christ's love in our community. God bless all of you. Thank you, Christos Anesti. Christos Anesti Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.